This fly I'm going to do is, is uh, one I've kind of dreamed up for an upcoming trip to Montana. And full disclosure, I have no idea if this fly will work or not. I'll let you know when I get back how I did with it. Uh, but the fly was inspired by a book I recently received uh, written by Gretchen and Al Beattie. And it's, it's called The Art of the Weave. It's about woven flies, generally the parallel weave. I think they call it the back and forth weave. Uh, but what I, my main interest in the book was the pots or pot weave, uh, especially where the hackle was concerned. And Gretchen and Al did an amazing job researching, uh, a very secretive method that was used in from the 20s through the 50s to make the pots flies and they were legendary out west these flies and I've always wanted to be able to tie them and now thanks to this book I can but in the meantime I looked at the hackle in the book, and, and it, it's all done with with hair. And I thought, man, I gotta I gotta have a, an emerger with some hair hackle on it. So I've done a, a little wet fly here, and it's 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 you know it's it's a last chance cripple with hair hackle, um, and not a cripple, a, a wet fly. But anyway, I'll sh I'll show you what I got. And uh, this will undoubtedly change. I'm going to do a lot of different versions of this with different kinds of hair, etc. But anyway, let's let's get started here. I've got some uh, Lagarten. Rusty Brown, 74 denier thread <clears throat> I'm using on this one. You could use a lot of different kinds of thread here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to start by spinning the hackle. Uh, I want to post the thread at about the 25% mark, and I'm going to... this hackle which is which consists of deer hair in this case is going to actually get spun right up here i've cleaned and stacked some deer hair and i want I want to start with it at least <clears throat> hook length because I'm going to use, I'm going to lose a little length when I when I tie it in. <clears throat> and I'll show you what I mean. <clears throat> I'm going to take a pinch here. I'm going to take another pinch. I'm going to work my way up just behind the eye and on this fourth one I'm going to spin the bobbin up should have done this before I started let's hope the thread holds and I'm gradually going to pull towards myself spinning this around the shank And if the butts get spun all the way around, you've pretty much done your job. And I'm going to cut these off right about right about there, right, kind of forming a little bit of a thorax because I want a very narrow body on this. This is going to be a like a PMD emerger. And that's what I hope this will get taken as.
Just going to use a few fibers of wood duck flank for the uh, tail. And I, I'm just going to put two or three light turns. Actually, that's a good length right there. I'm just going to leave that. This is a size 18 hook. I'm going to do all these in 18. I think that's going to be a good size. I know the, the last chance cripple, I typically fish in 18. So there's that. Let's goose by it. I'm going to tie this in on the far side of the hook, notch up, and that will give me a rough body. And I'm going to tie it in very close to the tip because I don't have a lot of room on an 18. So I want these uh, segments to be fairly narrow. We have a side channel we fish a lot and fish are very tough. There, there are lots of them and they're big and they rise with abandon, but boy are they tough. They get fished over every day of their existence. And uh, we've had the best luck, I think, with emergers and cripples and I've had some luck with my quill body, no hackle done. Also had good good luck with spinners, but boy, they, they will get to a point where where they're rising like crazy and you can't buy a fish in, in the very calm. There's a big pool and Been trying to figure it out for some time now, and to be perfectly honest, haven't. I'm going to use some, uh, for the thorax on this, I'm going to keep it rusty, and I'm going to use some, uh, just a little bit of rusty possum dubbing. And to help with that, I'm going to put a little sticky wax on here. I want this dubbing to be kind of rough. And I want this, I want this thorax to have some bulk. Get rid of this. I'm going to do an entire show on Gretchen and Al's book once I uh, come to grips with the, the, the pot flies. Franz Pot was a, he was a wig maker and barber out west. He was from Europe and originally and he was very secretive, patented everything and Gretchen and Al found found the patents somehow and I've done a lot of patent searching myself and uh, I don't know I don't know how they found the patents but they did and then they figured out how it was done from the patents which is not easy to do I've looked at some of these patents the gyro fly for instance which was the original parachute I found the patent for that and boy, it was tough to figure out exactly what Avery Brush was doing. 
Anyway, I'm just uh, working my way up from the eye here. And the result here is a very sparse, because I didn't use too much deer hair, very sparse hackle. And what I like about this is um, there's there's a twistiness to to this that you don't get with hackle, and and it's modeled in it in that the uh, you know the tips are darker, etc. Very cool. So I'm going to do a bunch of these. I'm going to use squirrel tail for some. I'm going to try various kinds of hair. Squirrel tail is a lot uh, finer. Uh, let's see. Let me get rid of that. Uh, I'm going to do some with ice dub for the thorax. Anyway, uh, take that fly for what it's worth right now. I'll let you know how uh, how I do, and uh, we'll we'll see how this all pans out. But uh, a Gretchen and Al's book is amazing, truly amazing, and they are they are masters with hair of various and sundry kinds, and masters of the weave. I've done a lot of parallel weaves uh, on Polish nymphs. But they cover weaves I've never heard of in this book. And it's, it's just, I haven't gone through it in detail yet, but it's very cool.